Hello, brothers and sisters. I have a glare going on. Uh, so, forgive me if how I look. I'm trying to see myself. Well, blessings and shalom. I hope you all that partook in the Day of Atonement had a, a wonderful, blessed one. From my last video of my list of 32 sins, uh, you get the gist, if you watched it, that it was kind of difficult and intense, to say the least. But it was also, brothers and sisters, the best day ever that will that I will never forget. Because, you know, shame and pain, but utter joy and happiness also came out of that day. And it was so intimately beautiful from the moment I woke up leading to just before sunset, uh pacing my back porch sidewalk to still look up in the sky and still talk with the lord just before the darkness says time is up for the day of atonement uh so it was bittersweet for me because of just that day i had with the lord's you know seeing the darkness finally end that day of what was an emotional beautiful uh extraordinary time and moment and just day with the Lord that I had got to share with him in a way I never did before. Uh, I'm just, I'm just grateful. And it was a, it was a wonderful, 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 blessed atonement. I will, I will never forget. And I pray yours was just as blessed. Uh, and now we are looking forward to the Feast of Tabernacles, the fun part. Because, you know, you fast from Feast of Trumpets uh, to the end of Day of Atonement, or at least some of us do. And it's a really drawing near, you know time in those days but the feast of Tr tabernacles is you know the last festival you can kind of let your hair down a bit and it's something i do with the kids uh and and i get to eat if i choose to with them so getting ready to make a big feast with you know me and my daughter for the first time she'll be helping me cook uh i'm making some jewish meals or dishes for the first time i'm not really good at american dishes but i'm not just bloody horrible at american dishes but just pray please pray uh over there but i'm looking forward to the celebration and glorification along with it and you know celebrating that with my children uh amen so now getting to the topic of the video uh and i have to say at first uh i was going to do a video just to talk about a couple of things uh and then i woke up this morning because i was planning to do that video i had planned to talk about uh and the lord was like squash that uh go right and the urgency to go right came over me but other than what i originally had in mind to talk about i didn't know what to write you know feeling pressed in my spirit that the lord has something in mind uh so you know i prayed to the lord and i was like lord reveal to me what you want me to say and then i started typing what the lord wanted me to share instead with you guys uh and it's mainly what's been going on between him and I. Uh, but he is putting it on me to disclose something now. Because I never felt pressed in my spirit to share it. Uh, and it was something between him and I. Not for others. Uh, but now he's wanting me to now share it. So this is me doing what the Lord says. As that's how servants roll with the Lord. Okay, so a couple of things. First, you know, the Lord has been revealing to me uh, that the terrible and great day of his return is coming. And it always has been coming. Uh, but he reveals much urgency in his return to not only take care of his blessed coming, but to take heed because the emphasis of how great yet terrible that day will be for a many is important to comprehend now than ever. Uh, the words great and terrible don't or won't give it justice of how glorious for some, yet horrible for some, it will really be. Uh, but there has to be some description in words to give us all an idea, even though those words are inferior, almost non-existent to the description of things that would take place in the word of God. Because it will be an experience <clears throat> uh, not of this world uh, and beyond our comprehension, just like hell. Uh, some of us will fall before that day and some of us will make it all the way to the end to be here for that day and the lord has been revealing to me uh leading me to believe i will be here to see that day and i have already felt that in my spirit that i'm in it for the long haul if you will 
uh, and it goes very well uh, with my spirit because I have a warrior spirit. Uh, warriors fight to the end. And brothers and sisters, you know, I don't know how exactly my path will play out, what it looks like. I just know the Lord has given me a word of my place in these last days. And as, as you know, his obedient servant and daughter and soldier, I accept and obey his position he has given me. And I'm, I'm ready to take it on in the way he wants me to fulfill my calling. And I'm not scared at all about the prospect of being here to the very last day. I'm not. It feels right within my spirit. Honestly, I think the ones who leave a little bit early to make it to the kingdom uh, will miss out on all the action of being here because the need or want or goal to want to stick around is to still keep reaching the lost, saving the souls for the kingdom. Uh, that when your time is up, you would have done your best in getting more to come along behind you by your service in Christ and by the power of Christ in you. Uh, all for the kingdom of God because Jesus wants all of us to be in the kingdom. He wants so many of us there. So why would his servants not want that also? And some of you are like, wait, what? Uh, but I, I, I say all of this uh, not downplaying the horror that is coming, that will be happening. But if I had more fear and concern for the horror aspect, I could not speak toward a spirit that I have in me towards rising up now and getting ready for, you know, for what we're about to embrace, you know, reluctantly. Um, I wouldn't have a spirit that I have in me towards, you know, rising up. Uh, we are the last generation. Peter, Paul, and the lot rest did their job in Christ, in their time, in their day, and walked the hard journey to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and many after them. And now it's our time for that. We are the future of the kingdom and and for those in Christ. And, and I want to end this life and enter that new world with a bang. I want to go out in a blaze of glory for the Lord, impacting the kingdom of darkness so hard as God's servant, daughter, and warrior to get more souls into to God's kingdom with me as Lord gives me will and strength to do so. Uh, that's my focal point. Uh, that's my calling. That's my spirit talking. I'm looking to fight, uh, not get out of here. But then again, I don't know how my story would truly play out. I, I just know, I know one thing, short stay or long stay. I'm ready. I have been preparing as the Holy Spirit instructed me to do for a little over a couple of years now. And I embrace it with honor and no fear because that's what preparation does when you truly prepare in Christ spiritually, faithfully, prayerfully. Uh, but I look at the people like the Apostle Paul. And to me, that's who I want to be. Like, uh, even, if I, even if I should die as he did, you know, most people want to be like Beyonce. I want to be like brothers and sisters before me who stood in faith to the end when that lion came and devoured them. Because nobody believes and even dies for anything or anyone they don't love and believe in that has not given them not one ounce of doubt. You know, someone once, someone once said, you don't die for things you doubt. And I don't want to rattle you guys up in a negative way. I'm just conveying who I am in Christ. So you get to, you get how I, I speak or come off in regards to that great and terrible day, uh, brothers and sisters, that is going to be. Uh, and there's going to be two sides on that day with a front row view and seat of the return of the Lord. And it won't be a, you know, differential in one side being Republican or in the other side being Democrat. It will be simply those in Christ and those not and on that great and terrible day, you want to be on the winning team and not on the other side. Uh, now, my calling, my path is not yours, maybe. Maybe you might have a different path and calling altogether. But irregardless, some of you might be in it for the long haul, leading up to the great and terrible days. Maybe some of you won't, but scripture at least tells us this much. Now, will there be a rapture? Will we get out of here before that great and terrible day 
uh, in case someone is thinking or asking that. Which leads me to what the Lord wanted me to also share with you. As far as a rapture, I know there is and has been a spiritual rapture that has taken place. I have only once, probably twice, I don't know, disclosed this. And at that time, though, I was a I was a baby in Christ, still on milk. Didn't know what it was, but uh, ever since that first time it happened, uh, the many times it has occurred after that, you know, I have lost count, but 95 to 97% of the time, I'm always in deep prayer when it occurs. Uh, but what happens is I get a Holy Spirit notion over me. I call it that. Uh, and I have learned to recognize through the many times it has happened to me uh, that tells me this is it or here we go again. Uh, but in prayer unto the Lord, it happens mostly. And it's mostly deep prayer, not a wham bam prayer, but truly uh, in spirit, in that holy covenant with the Lord. Because when you do that, you create a Holy Spirit environment. Not, uh, you, you create a Holy Spirit around you, not seen probably by the physical eye. Uh, you could be blessed to get a view of that in the spiritual realm. Uh, but what happens to me is when, is when that notion comes over me, and I call it the Holy Spirit because that's what it is. But it gives me a, a heads up first. And and sometimes it don't now. Uh, but I get a notion at times I can recognize. And, and then I start to feel my spirit being elevated upward and spinning around. Unable anymore to no longer feel the ground, the chair, the floor underneath me. Because my spirit is up in a whirlwind, it feels like. And it's like a, a peaceful angelic whirlwind because a physical one is alarming and terrifying. But when my spirit goes up uh, and I'm up with it in that spinning whirlwind, it's peaceful. And it's a, it's a spiritual realm I believe I'm inside of uh, and going through and learning through every experience of this happening to me the more i pray harder and especially glorifying and magnifying the, the name of the lord more in praise and worship in that moment when it is happening the higher my spirit goes up even further and the faster that that whirlwind i'm in spins all around me uh i i have felt so high one time it felt like i had to be where the clouds were and it lasts for a moment and then at the moment it decides to stop I slowly, gradually descend down and out of that whirlwind that stops spinning. And I'm able to now feel the physicalities of my chair and the floor underneath me. Uh, the most intense experience uh, was praying in the witching hours one night. Because me and Brother Tyler, sometimes uh, we plan to wake up in the middle of the night and come into agreement to, to offer up a prayer of thanksgiving and praise and then take it to the enemy in spiritual warfare and this time we decided to do it not over the phone together so we was texting each other back and forth you know when we were ready coming into agreement with each other and from each of our ends we started praying and I remember I was praying offering you know offering a prayer of thanksgiving unto the Lord first before I went into spiritual warfare <clears throat> Uh, but when I was done, I wanted to end the prayer speaking more from the heart to the Lord of, of everything I wanted to convey at that time in my heart unto the Lord in prayer still. And during that time of prayer, I felt my spirit more intensely than ever before come out of my body. And there was nothing left but my head that I, that I felt uh, because I'm still praying and, you know, if you react in a what is happening a type of uh, reaction, it goes away uh, like that. But if you stay focused in spirit and go with it and, and let whatever is happening happen, and especially with more praise and worship, calling out the name of the Lord, glorifying his name, magnifying his name, that's what feeds it and builds it 
and 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 just you glorifying and magnifying the name of the Lord always increases or heightens the, the experience of it. So when this happens, I have learned as I as I said that worshiping and praying even harder that moves and intensifies and prolongs whatever is happening in those moments. But my spirit so strongly left my body. And what I mean when I say strongly is that it was like it was leaving you know, being elevated out and upward in slow motion out of me. I don't know if you guys ever seen the movie called The Chronicles of Riddick with, with Vin Diesel, where the bad guy, Lord Marshall, forgive me, I used to be into these things. Uh, he grabs the soul out of this guy, and you see his soul come out. And this is the convert or die scene. Uh, so if you if you don't convert, you will die. And the, and the bad guy, Lord Marshall, he, he steals your soul right out of your body. Kind of just like grabs it out. Uh, but if you saw that movie, how the soul comes out of the body, uh, the visual is like that. Only in my experience, it was a very gradual, slow motion feeling to where I felt the essence, the essence of my spirit also descending up and out with, with it. Because my spirit had an <clears throat> essence factor over it that made me feel my spirit stretching out of me in a in a gradual slow motion elevation out of me and a visual as best as i can give because i am visual myself is like what happens in that movie when when the bad guy takes the soul out of that man that's the visual but i felt the essence that was attached to my my spirit stretch out along with my spirit very slowly in slow motion <clears throat> uh and it's hard to describe and even explain um, but as that is taking place, I'm at, I'm at my table and I'm praying, sitting down in the chair like I am now, uh, just, just like this or just like this praying and I'm, I'm experiencing my, my spirit leaving me, my, leaving my body. I'm at, I'm at, uh, I'm at a table. Um, my head is slumped down on it and I'm just praying. I'm praying. I'm at the table, I'm deep in prayer, going through this experience that's more intense than the others, but I'm still focused in spirit, in a body from my neck down, I can't feel I am in, or even there. <clears throat> I feel my head, and I'm praying out of it, uh, but I'm praying from an empty vessel of a body I can't feel that I'm in, from the neck down. Uh nothing i can't feel my body at all that i'm even in the body it's just there's a there's a shell there but i'm not in it uh but i kept praying in spirit worshiping and praying all the while and it was like the spirit went up to do what it needed to do for a moment and then i started to feel it gradually slowly descend right back down into my body the same way i felt it gradually and very slowly ascend out of my body out of Every experience of that happening, that was the most different and most intense experience. Because most of the time I'm right there going along through it. Wherever that spiritual acceleration and escalation takes me, usually in an upward whirlwind, <clears throat> dwelling there. And in the whirlwind, it feels like I'm on a merry-go-round, spinning around and around. And the more I call out to Jesus, call out his name, praise him and worship him in that moment, the higher, the faster it goes. Uh, but with that experience, <clears throat> my spirit left me. Uh, I didn't go with it. Uh, I stayed put, still here from the head only. Uh, the spirit did his thing on its own, uh, that it did, or, the, or wherever it went, I don't know. And then it came back down into me. And I did say this happens 95, 97% of the time in prayer because the other percent has been spur of the moments. Uh, where I, I was led to go pray and then it would occur like I was working one day and I just felt the urgency a strong urgency to go pray but I was working I could not do that on the job to where I could embrace prayer for a bit and then go get back to work so when I got home finally it was like when I got home it was like you know someone having to go pee really really bad and trying to go handle their business uh, so when I pulled up in my driveway got out of my Jeep uh, didn't go to my house left the keys in the ignition Went to my backyard, got on my trampoline uh, at the time, sat in the middle of that thing and started praying. And instantly, instantly, that experience of my spirit elevating up into a whirlwind happened. 
And you know it's happening because you feel yourself being elevated and you feel no ground, or in that case, no trampoline, no longer underneath you. And I got in trouble for it because, you know, I came home and I didn't even say hi and pray for us. Hi, dare I. <laughs> but the the next time is <clears throat> the, the other time, shall I say, I started to feel really dizzy all of a sudden in my bedroom. So dizzy that I had to go lay down and rest. Uh, but just before then, all three of my kids came in my room in a disagreement. So I had to deal with it and, or them. Uh, but when I said, now get out, <laughs> because I was still feeling dizzy, incredibly dizzy, but didn't want to show them that. So, I, you know, when I dealt with them, I was like, finally, I can lay down and just rest. And so when they left, you know, uh, I just, I plopped on my bed, uh, closed my eyes to pray about it because I'm very dizzy, don't know what's going on. And instantly my spirit is ascending upward and I can no longer feel the bed underneath me. <clears throat> and it feels like I'm floating high up in the air in that whirlwind again. And the last time that happened to me, brothers and sisters, was the night of Day of Atonement. When I went to bed and lay down to sleep, but I started to pray to the Lord before I went to sleep. And I got, eleva I got elevated up again in spirit. And this is what Brother Tyler from the Joshua Tree channel always talks about on his channel. That people probably don't get uh, because he, ha he has experiences like this too. But people always perceive things physically when there is a spiritual aspect to everything also that we don't take into account which is awful because so many are missing out on spiritual blessings, perceiving to believe something without taking in the spiritual aspect of, of, of everything, even in the word of God or what's happening in the world around them. So they can't fathom what you're talking about. So I believe the children of God, our spirit has been called up in that throne room already, perhaps, you know, despite our physical bodies not being there. But when people read the Bible, they perceive it physically and Everything will have just a physical manifestation only. And yes, it will and does, but there's also a spiritual aspect also we have to take into an account. Uh, so what about the rapture? Are we going to go up before then? Personally, uh, I have already been up many times. That's one. And two, from my perspective only, only from my perspective, you know, I believe in a catch in the way. I do believe in that I know it will come to pass and for me that is enough to know because I, I can't as the warrior uh, I am constantly worry or think about that why would I you know that that would mean fear is pleading or hoping for it uh, if I'm content that a rapture will come to pass then I'm content that a rapture will come to pass I don't need to put much emphasis on the when and, and where it's, it's going to take place and many cling on to the rapture because it cradles fear inside of people as a warrior my spirit is ready to fight the battle spiritually prayerfully faithfully knowing there will be a catch in the way to happen but the warrior in me is staying focused at the harvest of lost souls and doing what is assigned to my calling and in my spirit to do and i acknowledge a catch in the way but i do not need to worry about it when it when it comes that is not a role or a concern for me in regards to who i am in spirit and the role i have been called to do it if any of that makes sense so i'm going to end this and please let me know if you guys care for me to do a q a live on this for those who might have questions but the lord is leading me to re to finally reveal things i didn't before um and sound the alarm and i pray you have an open heart to be open-minded to receive it or take it to the lord in prayer or both uh, but I love you guys. Until next time, blessings and shalom.